I'm going to paint a picture for you. Just imagine this. You're on the highway. You're moving out to the left-hand lane to pass traffic because that is the lane that you should be passing traffic in, not those ones to the right because you're a good driver. You, go, you start to accelerate, and then your car feels like a false fly on its face. It feels like it's misfiring. It lost power all of a sudden. What is causing that? You're going to think, oh, it's a bad spark plug. It's a bad ignition coil. Maybe something else is going on. You plug in the scan tool. You're expecting to see misfire fault codes, and there's nothing there. What's causing that problem? If you have a modern turbocharged car that's using an air to water charge cooler for the intake system, your problem could actually reside there. It has nothing to do with the engine at all. So we're going to show you how to diagnose that problem today on this GLC 300, but this is going to apply to any car that's using an air to water charge cooler. So before we get into diagnosing this problem and understanding the nature of the issue, the first thing we need to be able to identify is whether the car has a split cooling system or not. And what I mean by a split cooling system is on these modern turbocharged cars, you have your high temp circuit, which is for the engine, and a low temp circuit, which is for all the accessories, such as the charge cooler, maybe some auxiliary coolers. It really depends on the setup. There's one key visual identifier. Let's go take a look under the hood and I'll show you how to find it. So now we're under the hood of this Mercedes GLC 300, which has the M274 engine. Of course, the engine bay, the engine configuration, all this is going to be different from car to car, but there are a couple universals here. If your vehicle has a split cooling circuit, low temp and high temp, it's going to have two expansion tanks. We have an expansion tank here, and we have an expansion tank here. One is larger than the other. Your low temp circuit is always going to have the smaller expansion tank because it has the least amount of cooling capacity and it doesn't need as much expansion due to the fact that it has a lower overall capacity. The other way to identify in a rare case where maybe they look the same size is you can trace the expansion tank lines back to the intake manifold or charge cooler, which is always going to be on the intake side of the engine. Trace the lines back, it's always going to go to that expansion tank. And once you identify that expansion tank, that is your low temp circuit expansion tank. Uh, intake temperature is very important as part of the combustion process. If the intake charge on a forced inducted engine is too hot, it will cause the car to go into a limp mode. So, on this car's case, we know that this thing has a hesitation problem, particularly when you're trying to accelerate. We're going to plug in a scan tool, and we're going to see what the fault codes are. If there's any stored information that's going to help us identify what is causing that performance loss. Once we have it plugged in, let's see what we have, and we'll go from there. All right, so I've plugged our Autel MX-808 into this GLC 300, and there's, you know, faults on it. A lot of modern cars are going to have faults. The one that stands out to me immediately is powertrain control unit. One fault. So we're going to go into that. So this part of it is going to be different depending on the car manufacturer and how they decide to set stuff up. But I'm going to look at trouble codes. So we have a uh, P026E71 active and stored fault code, and it says actuation of the coolant pump of the charge air cooler has a malfunction, the actuator is blocked. Let's see, actuation of MPF1, low temperature circuit circulation pump one, 100%. So we have a lot of stored fault data here. And the thing that stands out to me is the commanded actuation of this pump is at 100%. And the reason that is a problem is, well, it's not really a problem that's commanded 100%. It means that it was at 100% which means there was a high demand for cooling. And I suspect that this is not working. On these cars where you have no intercooler up front or none of that plumbing, the air is going directly from the turbo outlet straight into the charge cooler or intake manifold. And that air is going to be extremely hot. Anytime you compress air, it gets very hot. Engines do not want warm or hot air. It's going to cause pre-ignition events, which is going to cause, you know, which is knock. Knock is bad for the engine, so there's special parameters tied into the engine control side to pull back timing uh, to basically save the engine from damage. I'm actually going to uh, clear this fault code out. And in clearing the fault code out, I want to command the pump on. And by can commanding the pump on, um, if there is a problem, this fault code should come back immediately. I think already dealing with a dead pump but it, this is part of the diagnostic process. We don't want to assume. We want to test, we want to confirm, and we want to move forward from here. So the engine needs to be off for this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, command the pump on. And let's see what kind of value we get when this is running. 
0 0.24, which is below the minimum, which is a problem. Uh, I'm going to take this one step further and open up the expansion tank cap. With the pump commanded on, coolant should be circulating into this expansion tank. Nothing's happening. Um, I also hear something electronic happening over here, like a little whir sound temporarily and then it goes away. The low temp coolant pump is actually down here in the wheel well. It sounds like it's trying to be turned on, but it's just not. But before I throw a pump in this thing and open up this low temp cooling circuit, I want to verify that the wiring integrity to the pump is good before we just throw a pump at it. So that's the next step. So unfortunately you can't see what I see, but the wiring lead for the top of this pump is in a really tight spot. It's a three wire pump. So we have our 12 volt supply ground and then our signal wire. This is where wiring diagrams are super useful. I'm going to assume the brown wire is ground. And then we have a black wire Actually, there's a brown with a gray tracer, then there's a brown and black, and then there's a larger gauge wire, which I'm going to assume is power. So really what I want to figure out, do we have power, do we have ground, and do we have a signal? If I now have all three of those things, then for sure the pump, there's something definitely wrong with it. It needs to be replaced. Um, so I'm going to grab my multimeter, and the first thing I'm going to check for is ground, which is going to be the easiest thing to look for. So I have the car powered on in accessory mode. I'm going to go back to the subframe and we have 11.56 volts, which is probably going to be battery power with the car on. The battery's a little bit low. So the power wire is good. And now the only thing I want to check is our signal wire, which is going to be pin two. It's going to be the thinnest wire of the three. According to my multimeter, it's commanding uh, 8.7 volts or 8.6 volts. That's on the signal side which now is probably that high because it's not plugged in. But here's the thing we've learned. We've got good ground, good power, and we have a signal from the DME. But the pump is stuck. So I think it's pretty definitive at this point that the pump is bad. And we're able to determine this with a consumer grade scan tool that does a little bit more than average and a consumer grade multimeter. In this case, one that comes from Harbor Freight, that's about 30 bucks. So this is some very simple electrical diagnosis to confirm before you open anything up and start replacing parts and start going crazy with it that this is a very simple fix. You just have to disconnect this pump now, put a new one in, drain the coolant, put coolant in, swap the pump in, and then we should be good. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and replace the pump, refill the circuit, and then we're going to test the pump with the MX-808 and confirm that everything is good. But I think at this point, we've done the due diligence before we can go ahead and throw parts at it. So. Well, at this point, it's just swapping out, put the new one in. Day two. All right, so we've refilled the low temp coolant circuit. I'm going to go back into the powertrain control unit, which on the Mercedes, you have to go through PTCU to activate the special test. And you'll remember before, uh, when I went to go do the test, the pump would try to kick on and then would immediately turn off. Um, so it was never actually fulfilling the minimum requirement in terms of amp draw. So it would set the fault code. So we'll see at this point, the new pump should fix the problem. So I'll activate it and we'll let it run a test. And right now it's drawing 4.79 amps, which is between the 2.8 and 6. So I'm going to let it run. So now we have a good pump that's functioning correctly and it's passing the test. So I'm just going to end it. I'm going to back out of the special function here to activate the low temp coolant circuit pump. I'm going to go back to trouble codes and I'm going to read. Well, no fault codes detected. So that's what we want to see. Um, the new pump seems to have fixed the problem. So my theory without going to any further testing is the control unit in the pump was faulty, which any of these electric water pumps that are controlled via pulse width modulation, uh, via five volt signal, more times than not, your issues on those pumps are going to be on the control side, not the mechanical side. And I actually did take it apart to show you that there is a control unit inside the pump. It's literally a circuit board. Anything could happen to those anytime electronics fail. So uh, we now know the car is fixed. 
and I would imagine the performance problem that the owner of this vehicle was talking about in regards to accelerating is going to be resolved, but we're going to take it for road test later to verify that. So that's it. Pretty simple, um, pretty simple diagnostic, but definitely something to be aware of when you're working on a car with a water-cooled intercooler or a low temp circuit that also cools the intercooler. So if you find that you have a performance problem, if you find that there's like this mystery hesitation or feeling of a misfire or something like that, and there's no fault codes on the DME, I would seriously look at the intake air temperature. And if the intake air temperature is very, very high under certain operating conditions, heavy engine load, things like that, you really need to take a look at how your low temp coolant circuit's functioning and also look at this pump because this is what circulates coolant through the system. Overall, very easy fix on this particular car. Everything was pretty accessible and the fault code was pretty definitive that there was something wrong on the control side. Um, would love to know exactly where that was, but again, I think it's here. Hope you learned some of this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment box below. We'll get back to you. Definitely hit the like button. And if you want to see more diagnostic content like this that just talks about vehicle systems, you want to hit subscribe because we have plenty on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.